Hello everybody, I am Fuzzy Face and we're back again with Ferrari. We're on the quest to make Ferrari great again, although you could possibly say we have already made Ferrari great. Already, we already have won five races. We've won five races in a row now. We came... What did we come in the first race? Second, I think? Did we come second? Second and third in the first race we came. Even better than I thought. Kimi got second, that's the only time that he's finished ahead of Vettel. Every race since then, Vettel has won every single race. Vettel last time winning in Hockenheim, his first ever win in Hockenheim as we said last time he'd only ever won before that at the Nürburgring in Germany so that's the first time he's won his home Grand Prix in Hockenheim. Standings were a massive 51 points ahead of Mercedes, absolute domination from us and Vettel as well 53 points ahead of Ricardo. he's got 55 to Rosberg and 60 to Hamilton so it's going to take something of a a really 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 hard push from the Mercedes to get back into contention with us we're gonna have to slip up somewhat shocking for that to let them sort of back in but then again if the Mercedes sort of pick up on their strategy and start getting one two finishes quite a bit it might be pretty close come the end of the season maybe around 13 14 they might be able to get caught back up anyway if you go ahead and click on the staff Matteo Binotto is possibly on his way out we've made an offer for Ross Braun so hopefully Ross Braun's going to be coming in in time for Silverstone. So hopefully we've got Ross Braun back in time for Silverstone. We've made that jump. That was one of the main aims of this game to reunite Ferrari, Ferrari with Ross Braun to hopefully bring Mick Schumacher in and sort of get that sort of early 2000s, that sort of Ferrari, Ross Braun, Schumacher, see if we can dominate with that lineup. Mick Schumacher's possibly going to be coming in as a reserve driver for his first season, whereas we. Kimi's going out of the second seat. He's going because his markability ratings are nowhere near what we need. He's at 20%. Obviously known as the Iceman. He does have the Iceman stat in this game, which takes a massive amount of his marketability, which is stopping us from getting five-star sponsorships, which is what we need with Ferrari. So we're either going to be going with... Max Verstappen would be a front runner, but I don't really want him in the Ferrari because he's possibly just too good, really. He's four stars and he's going to be five stars pretty quickly, I would feel. Plus, I don't, I don't want him and Vettel sort of working together. I don't think that would be quite right. Plus, I don't think he uh, sort of fits the Ferrari image at the moment. It's a little bit too brash, a little bit too uh, rash with his uh, decisions sometimes. So, I just don't think he'd fit in Ferrari at the moment as it is. Possibly Perez would. Perez would be the choice. He's, four, he's just under four stars at the moment, although that's because he's got a dodgy neck. But he is usually right on the four star mark. Is it his fitness that's been knocked down? So his fitness here is usually a 16. So Perez is a decent driver. Not the best. That would possibly be the best way to go. Therefore, it's still not too easy next season. We do still have a driver that shouldn't be dominating. We still try to scout quite a few people at the moment. We've still got a lot of people to scout through. We've got people like... We could put Marciello in the car. Who is from Russian time. He's a good, decent Italian driver. With a lot of potential as well. It just depends what his markability rating is as well. Like we could get a young Italian driver in, like Giovinazzi from Prima. I think he's sort of like a Ferrari development driver, like Ocon and Verline are for Mercedes. In that I know this season, the 2017 season, he is like the reserve driver for Ferrari. And he's going to be doing a lot of simulator work for them. So Giovinazzi maybe, but that would mean we can't put Mick Schumacher in the reserve seat. So it is possibly going to be Perez that goes in that seat. I have said earlier that we're not going to be designing any new parts for this season as I want it to be a little bit challenging going forward. I don't want to be I don't want to really keep winning races over and over and over again. But I'm going to be designing new parts. Someone left a message in the comment to design parts and not use them in the car for next season. So it's more like we're developing parts for next season. So I'm going to build these parts, I'm going to be on these new parts with the risky parts therefore. I've got no chance of putting them in the car, but they will become the part for next season. So we're going to go ahead and build a new engine, which is our weakest part, uh, weakest point at the moment. Hopefully that can get us somewhere near Mercedes for next season. What we've got coming up is Monaco. I'm not sure how accurate this is. I'm not, it's possibly the one that does mimic Monaco the best in the base game of this. This is actually the South African Grand Prix. I think it's Cape Town. It is. I'm not actually sure whether I've run Cape Town on video before. I don't think I have because I don't think it's in the Asia Pacific and I don't think it's in the European series and I haven't got quite this far in the season in my first season in the World Motorsport Championship in the Predator save that I'm doing as well at the moment. I've run it a few times, possibly running other games. I'm not sure how much I've played in the World Motorsport Championship though because I've 
usually I've been playing with teams like Archer and stuff and other teams like that down, right down at the bottom just messing about with a few a few things but that's where we're at with that hopefully we can get something decent out of Monaco hopefully Mercedes are a little bit stronger and not going to make a lot of strategy <laughs> mistakes like they have been doing like coming in for the wets in the last race like a lap early that's what they did didn't they no they did they, they, they change i can't remember actually what happened they're changing they made a really strange decision where they changed back into the wets instead of yeah they changed back into the wets instead of waiting a lap or two when they could have gone to the intermediates and then they tried to stick out the entire race on the wets and it totally messed them up which to be fair every other car did so that was possibly more of a problem with the ai but they have been making some strange decisions that like let ricardo win that first race of the season and a lot of other times where they've been doing things like that being a little bit strange although the results aren't too bad now that they're sitting in second but Hamilton's had some really bad races where he's come sixth and fourth when he should have really been like second and third behind Vettel but that's how it is we're gonna get on now to the Grand Prix to the weekend we're gonna go shell because we're not always guaranteed first even though we've had five in a row we don't always get first in qualifying so it is more beneficial to go for the slightly cheaper one because we've more guarantee we've got more guarantee of getting the full amount rather than just half the amount for this one tire selection as i've gone through before we always use the same ones because we don't need the harder compound tire usually during the weekend and um, part fitting everyone's fine so yeah we're gonna go ahead and get on with practice see what sort of setups we get and come back for qualifying Right, so an excellent practice session there. We're not too far behind Lewis Hamilton in his Mercedes. Uh, Kimi, under one tenth of a second behind, actually a tiny little bit quicker than Vettel there. Although a lot of these other cars didn't set their quickest times on the ultra soft. So hopefully we're going to be pretty, uh, pretty high up in uh, qualifying here. So let's have a quick look. We've got most of the things done that we wanted. We've got qualified, we've got 15% for most of these, so we can decide what we need to do because we might need the super soft for Kimi because he's a little bit harder wearing on the tyres. He goes through them at a little bit quicker rate than what Vettel does. But he needs the ultra soft boost for qualifying. Cast have actually got full excellent there with Vettel. It was pretty close going after the last setup. He, we got pretty close and moved away, but he's got excellent rating on this one. We didn't hear, we were, took us a while to get there initially. But his quickest came at a 118.5 on this setup, but he was running a different tyre and a lot more fuel for that stint. It was we try to get the uh, try to get the race bonus. And we got there pretty early with Kimi, who was a little bit easier going in getting his setup. So yeah, we're gonna get on with qualifying now and we'll come back when it's time for the flying lap. Right, so both Raikkonen and Vettel are on their flying lap. Now there's a little bit of traffic, but traffic doesn't seem to matter too much since a patch came out I keep saying this over and over again but that's why we send them out in traffic now there's no real difference as Raikkonen sets their fastest first sector over Vettel even though he was in traffic you see so it doesn't really matter too much here and let's see what sort of time we can get here as Vettel comes across the line just about here so second for Vettel slower than Ricardo slower than one of the Red Bulls and Raikkonen goes a little bit slower than Vettel as well so we're about two tenths down on the red bull at the moment. Hamilton and Rosberg out on track. Hamilton's out on track. What's he doing? Hamilton's going quickest at the moment. So we'll just keep an eye on Hamilton. He's gone a little bit slower than Ricardo in that second sector. He's slowed down a little bit. Is he going to get pole? Hamilton gets pole off his first lap. So let's have a quick look. Where's Rosberg? Here's Rosberg coming round. What's Rosberg's time like? He's a little bit off the time of Hamilton here. Hamilton was off in the second sector. Where can Rosberg get? Rosberg goes third. So we're down in fourth and sixth. So this is a little bit more like it here. We're actually struggling a little bit more compared to the Red Bull and the Mercedes here. But obviously we've usually been able to make that back during the race. So we'll come back a bit nearer the end of this session when we'll be doing our second lap. And we'll carry on from there. Right, so Raikkonen's doing his second lap now. Which should give us a little bit of time near the end to get Vettel. Nice and sorted on the little mini game. So let's just see what Raikkonen can do here. There's not a lot of traffic out, so maybe that's going to affect the grip around this track. Because there's not a lot. There's a uh, a lot of the uh, the rubber possibly will have been moved away, but the track grip is still going up, so it's not that bad. But he's actually gone a little bit slower here than his first lap. Eight tenths down, as opposed to fifth tenths down on his other lap. So 
that's Raikkonen and done for this session so we'll be bringing Vettel out in a little bit Rosberg's just come out Hamilton's out as a couple of Force Indias out and so on and so forth so we'll come back in a second and see what Vettel can do on his last lap right so Vettel starts his last lap hopefully we can get above Rosberg here have they finished their lap or are they still doing it is Rosberg actually going quicker here no Rosberg's down on the first time that was set Hamilton down on uh, Hamilton's actually up on his first time so what's Ricardo doing where's Ricardo um, Ricardo hasn't actually reached the first set to yet but he's down on Hamilton but we need to try and get ahead of Rosberg here which might be possible since he's down on his first lap time Vettel's not far behind Hamilton off that first sector really close to him here but down in the second or is that just because Verstappen's just set a massive flying lap there that's why we dropped Verstappen actually goes quicker than Hamilton so the red bones are really strong around this track as well this is possibly going to be the sort of race that we've been wanting where we're not going to be so dominant Vettel uh, actually going slower than his first lap as well now so it doesn't like we're going to improve on fifth and sixth no Vettel does go a little bit quicker than Rosberg there so Vettel gets back up to fourth ranking in, in six there pretty good his Bottas still out on track his Bottas doing an in lap so yeah so that's it from there Verstappen putting an absolute flying lap there at the end to get Paul taking Hamilton off the front of the grid so it's a Mercedes, it's a Red Bull Mercedes front grid. And we've got Ricardo in the Red Bull and us. And then we've got Mercedes on the third row with us with Raikkonen. And we're followed in seventh by Williams, eighth, the Force India of Hulkenberg. We've got a Toro Russo in the top ten of Kvyat. Pretty decent there. And another Williams rounding out the top ten. So we've got Saints and uh, Kvyat doing pretty well in the Toro Russo. They're ninth and eleventh, actually besting the McLarens pretty easily. Here, the Toro Rosso is doing a lot better than the McLaren too with Alonso, but are pretty much struggling here. It's McLaren and uh, Renault are sort of battling it out, whereas Toro Rosso are battling it out with Force India and uh, and you sort of got Williams sort of above them, sort of one little step, a tiny little step above Toro Rosso and Force India in this game. Whereas this looks more like Red Bull and Mercedes are sort of getting back to form here. So hopefully, hopefully, it's going to be a nice, decent race here. So what do we need? We're gonna put Ultra Softs and Race Trim on, on Vettel's car. We just need to see what sort of strategy we can do because it's a long it's long lap wise, but it's because the laps are quite short at 118. But you can't get a lot out of the Ultra Soft, so you would need to do three stops to use all the Ultras. Whereas we could do two. You'd have to do three. It's going to be three stops, isn't it? Unless we want to use a soft tyre at some point. Although a soft tyre is not that much slower here. As like it would be if we like had the choice between uh, super soft. soft. No, if we had the choice between soft, medium and hard. The hard are a lot slower than the soft. Whereas the soft are not that much slower. About a star lower than the ultra soft. But not that much slower than the super soft. So what are we going to do here? What are we going to do? don't think there's much point using the ultra soft in uh, Raikkonen's car what can he get out of an ultra soft six laps so we could do two with Raikkonen on two super softs and then one set of the soft tyre so we're gonna have to give Raikkonen definitely this uh, super soft boost so that's what we're gonna do with Raikkonen he's not gonna even use the ultra soft He's not even going to do a quick stint on the Ultras. Vettel's that not much better with them either. Even like two stops he's going to have to do. We're going to have to do a set on each. Even that's sort of just about stretching it, isn't it? A set. Using a set of each. But that's what we're going to have to go for with Vettel here. I think everyone else at the front will be going on the Ultras. So we're going to try not to burn through these tyres too quickly with Vettel because we do need them to last. We do need them to last with Raikkonen as well. So I think we're just going to have to sort of play it by ear just how quickly these tyres wear out around here of what we're going to do. As usual, we start in uh, push and high. It seems to work a lot better from the starts recently. And Vettel off again to another storming start there. Gets past Ricardo pretty easily and gets up the inside of Hamilton and up the inside of Vettel, uh, up the inside of Max Verstappen as well. So an absolute brilliant start from Vettel. 
Raikkonen had a bit of a nightmare there, down into 8th place at the start, but then that's possibly because he's on the soft tyres, although Bottas has started on the softs and made quite a lot of moves there to get up into 4th. Raikkonen is actually battling away in 8th place at the moment. Who's that? It's one of the Toro Rosses of Kvyat getting up the inside of him, and the Williams of Massa as well. Can Raikkonen fight back here? It looks like he's going to get stuck behind those two as they bunch up. And Vettel's got quite a commanding lead now. He's get about, yeah, he's pulling away from Verstappen as well. Second place, have they turned down already? It looks like they've turned down already trying to conserve these tyres. So we're possibly going to follow them. We've got to try and make these last. Although we need these tyres to get some heat in them for Raikkonen. As he fights back now with Massa. Although we managed to get past, he managed to get past Kvyat at some point. And Vettel absolutely pulling away here at the front. Although Verstappen's now starting to pull back. Or is that because... No, that's because Hamilton's got past Verstappen. So Verstappen's starting to drop away. Whereas Hamilton's trying to fight back at us. So we'll just have to keep an eye on that. Whereas Raikkonen has now got past Ricardo. So Ricardo having a bit of a nightmare as well in the Red Bull. Raikkonen's got a force India in front of him. We just have to keep an eye on... Keep an eye on Vettel here. Just hope. Hamilton's actually pushing at the moment so he's actually burning quite a bit of fuel to try to catch back up with us so we're not going to respond to that at the moment I don't want to waste too much fuel and the tyres are now just about there you could do with some more heat in the tyres of Vettel's so maybe we should go ahead and push them here we've got a little bit more life in them as than Hamilton have we 68 yeah we've got a little bit of room to a little bit of room to do that. And the Hamilton's starting to get pretty close. It's going to be under a second in a minute. <clears throat> Although we don't have much uh, hope of competing head-to-head -head with the Mercedes. Although I'm saying that I put us into overtake mode and we start pulling away. Although that's because we're using a little bit more of the tyre. What's Raikkonen doing? So he's going to be able to stay a lot longer than this. Hunkenberg has actually worn through that pair of bunch of sauce pretty rapidly. Is Vettel actually maintaining this distance just about? Hamilton's turned down, but he's actually... So we can respond to that by going back into high mode. We don't need to run medium mode. We don't need to recover any fuel. His Raikkonen has been overtaken by Ricardo at some point. He's now behind Ricardo. So that's what the tyre wear rates between them are. Because even though Raikkonen's on the super soft, he's pretty much matching what Vettel's done on the ultra soft. So... It's a pretty good job that we didn't have him on the ultra sauce from the start, otherwise he'd probably be already near. He'd probably be already through these tyres at the moment. And Vettel is actually getting a nice little bit of a distance back from Hamilton. He's getting up towards the two second mark. Are we still in a position where we've got more tyre life than him? It would be good if we could stay out an extra lap over what Hamilton does. As that usually works out strategy wise if we can stay out a lap longer. Whereas we might need to think about conserving this because we're not going to get to the point where we wanted to here. Although we get, we actually are. We're going to go a, bit, a little bit longer in the ultra softs than what we wanted. So that is uh, pretty decent there for us. Although they're starting to get cold. I was going to try and conserve them a little bit. Don't want these tyres getting too cold. Raikkonen, who have we got past, back past there? Someone actually come into the pit? No, Hunkerberg come into the pits, but he's stuck in a lot of traffic here down the back end. So that should get Raikkonen past uh, Hunkerberg on the next round of pit stops. Vettel now got a two and a half second lead. That's not bad. To, is this the corner that sort of... We're coming up to it now. I guess this is the corner that represents the like, Fairmont hairpin. You know, the really tight, slow hairpin around Monaco so I guess that's what that represents that little roundabout so Hamilton's coming in this, this lap that's because the tyres are worn so should we respond now should we go the same are we going to lose too much time with this tyre I think we are so should we push everything till we get to the pits right so we did manage to get to lap 7 or lap 8 didn't we we've done so we've got 19 laps left after this we could possibly do it in two sets of super softs. Hopefully we can. Should we risk a fast pit stop here? I don't want to make a mistake and let Hamilton pass. So should we go balanced? 
Don't want to let Hamilton pass. No, we're going to have to risk it just in case Hamilton goes for a fast pit stop as well. Whereas Raikkonen's going to have to get another lap out of these tyres. Here. He's going to have to. It's just what he's going to have to do. We don't want him in the pits just yet. Hopefully we don't make a mistake here. Ah, oh, there is a mistake. Come on, Vettel. Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should have gone with a normal. It seems to be. I wonder if that's a factor of the new patch as well, because everyone just like sort of spams the fast pit stop, whereas you should really go with a balanced one. So maybe we're going to have to use balanced pit stops from now on. Maybe that's what we're going to have to do with uh, Raikkonen. He's going to have to come in. Are we going to do it on... Should we do it on two sets of soft? Might as well for this middle sector and then we can decide what we're going to... This middle section and then we can decide what we're going to do from there. So Vettel now battling with Raikkonen. Going to get past him pretty easily there. And up the inside of Bottas as well. We'll possibly lose it. No, going to get past him on the slow corner here. Vettel actually passed there, so Raikkonen has still got to pit. But we're quite a little bit behind Hamilton here. And we're going to have to turn this engine down pretty soonish. We don't want to blow through these tyres too quickly. So we'll just watch Raikkonen now, who follows Bottas into the pits. Bottas in, and we're going to have a nice quick pit stop here. Battle with Bottas straight out of the pits there. So we can actually push these tyres a tiny little bit now. We do have room to run in overtake mode. So should we run in overtake mode to see if we can keep it? Well, we need to keep ahead of the McLaren, obviously. The button, otherwise we get slowed down. But hopefully we can get Raikkonen past Bottas here. We don't want Bottas slowing Raikkonen down too much. But we don't really want to blow through this tyre. So Vettel now is actually gaining back on Hamilton here. With Raikkonen. He's starting to get back at Hamilton. Whereas Raikkonen now. Where's, did we get past Bottas? Where's Bottas? No, we're coming past some of these back markers. But Raikkonen uses uh, uses the fact that Palmer's slowing Massa up to dive down the inside and get past both of them in one swoop down the straight into the corner. Brilliant there from Raikkonen. So Raikkonen now is six. So where is the Red Bull? Quite down on the Red Bull here. But we're going to have to turn back down now. With this. We're still gaining with Vettel on Hamilton pretty quickly. Hamilton's come out on the soft. Oh, it actually came out on the soft. Whereas we can do this possibly in two super soft stints. Hopefully we can. Because we're quite a bit quicker than Hamilton here. If we can get past him. Well, it's possibly going to be hard overtaking him. So should we try burn off some fuel to try and get past him? Should we risk it or should we just like try and hang on to the back of him? Although he started pushing now a little bit, hasn't he? He started burning his fuel. So once he turns down, he's not going to get that far in front of us, I don't think. Although look at that, the power of the Mercedes is starting to pull away here. Whereas Raikkonen's having a hard time catching up to Ricardo, but has got a nice little gap over Bottas now. So it looks like this is sort of the place Raikkonen always finishes, about sixth place. That seems to be his place. So we're just waiting. We're going to see if Hamilton turns down at some point. What's his tyres like? So even on the soft, it doesn't seem to be much difference. 55% and we've got we've just about that with the uh, super soft as well. But Hamilton's blowing through a ton of fuel here. So maybe we'll just sit off the back of him here. See if we can go like a a lap longer than him and really push everything. I don't I don't think that's gonna be possible. No, we're just waiting for him to turn right. He's turned down now, so should we go high and overtake more? See if we can get back that little bit of distance there. We should be able to pick that back up pretty easily as he hits a couple of back markers here. So he wasted quite a bit of fuel there, did Hamilton, for not much gain. I don't think we're going to get him in the slow corners here, but... Hamilton, because I don't have to respond, otherwise Vettel should get past him at some point, hopefully. Can we get him on a straight? There's not a lot of straights where you can get right on the back of him around this track. Vettel trying for the outside there. 
Raikkonen dropping even further behind Ricardo now. Um, Vettel makes a really nice move there through the slow corners. Can he keep it through this really slow part of the track? It looks like he can. We're going to have to try slow down a little bit now. Although we've got in front now. And we're going to have to come into the pits in a second. Although hopefully we can uh, get another lap out of this. And stay ahead of Hamilton. It looks like we're still pulling away here. So what's Hamilton doing? Are his tyres even... His tyres are getting towards the point as well. He's not... Still pulling away from him, aren't we? So we're going to have to come in this lap. And we should be able to get to the end of the race now on a pair of soft tyres. And we're not going to risk a fast pit stop again. So it's just whether we can uh, stay ahead of Hamilton. Although, is he starting to come back at us now? Just as we get around to the point of the note. We're still pulling away from him here. Even with the tyres where they are. Because Hamilton's going to try to stay out another lap as well. Which should bode well for us. If he tries to stay out another lap on the worn tyres. We should be able to get out. And get a nice little bit of time on him. Whereas Raikkonen is now up into 50. Is that because someone's pitted? Yeah, that's because Rosberg's pitted. That's why he's up there. Although his tyres are pretty cold. But it's just a matter of trying to get him through enough. We've got enough room to push this one lap, I think. With it before he makes his last pit stop here. That's what we can do with Raikkonen. We just need to stay in a distance here to Hamilton that we can get out of him. Get out in front of him. Try and get a little bit of heat in these tyres. We can still run in overtake mode. We don't need to try and recover the fuel just yet. We don't want to try and do that until we know that we're ahead of Hamilton. Although look at that, we're actually getting down. We should, when he comes into the pits, is he going to try pit? He must be surely pitting this lap. I'm gaining quite a little bit of time on him here. So he's going to come into the pits only about 15 seconds ahead. Right, he's into the pits now. So we should be able to get past him pretty easily. Whereas Raikkonen now is trying to come out ahead as well. So where's Vettel going to be? Quite a bit in front there. So absolutely brilliant from Vettel. So we can possibly turn back everything to medium here. And try to recover some of this fuel. Even Rosberg's actually got past Hamilton here. But Rosberg does have to make another pit stop because he's got no chance of getting to the end of the race on the ultra softs. Hamilton meanwhile is pushing it a little bit on these super softs. He's possibly going to be worn out towards the end of the race but he should be able to make some of this gap back. Well, if you look at that we made a massive a massive move on that one lap that Hamilton stayed out. We made a massive move there but hopefully now it's just about getting Raikkonen right through to the end of the race on these tyres. So where is Raikkonen? Seventh. But Bottas still has to pit. We don't have much fuel to recover from him. So we can keep him running like that. So what are we doing lap wise? Should we try and recover a little bit more of this fuel by running in low mode? Because we can recover 0.2 laps of fuel per, per lap in low mode. What are the... Uh, the Mercedes aren't really pushing either at the moment. So they're not going to... What are they gaining per lap? Let's just see what the lap times are like from running in low mode. If we can recover the fuel, then we can just run in high mode and stay in front of them till the end of the race, knowing that Ham uh, knowing that Rosberg does have to pit, and it's gonna, possibly going to be hard for Hamilton to get past him. So we do that in a 123-107. The Mercedes, meanwhile, running in medium. Do it in a 122-609. Hamilton's a lot quicker, but he's being held up by Rosberg, so... It's only about half a second, isn't it? So we can just run like this and recover pretty much all of this fuel here for Vettel. Whereas Raikkonen now back up into six as Bottas must have pitted. There's not much chance of catching Ricardo unless we can get some heat back into these tyres. Let's have him push in uh, attack mode for a little bit just to get this back up. Otherwise he's going to be so slow on this tyre. Should we try and make a move for two laps? Should we see? What's Ricardo? No, Ricardo's pushing as well. We've got no chance of catching him. There's no point risking out with Raikkonen here. This is where he's possibly going to finish the race up at. Whereas we've now recovered the fuel pretty much with Vettel. Try and get a little bit more heat in these tyres. 
hitting a few back markers now but we shouldn't have any problems getting past them here we're not being slowed up too much we're still 10 seconds ahead of the Mercedes of Rosberg who of course does have to pit and of course it looks like he's been holding up his uh it looks like he's been holding up Hamilton as well who's been putting it who was putting in some absolute corkers of a lap but then got stuck behind Rosberg even though it was on the slower tyre Hamilton was going quicker than Rosberg for a couple of them it looks like it's going to be Vettel's sixth win, six win in a row here hopefully fingers crossed the uh, Mercedes are coming back a little bit but Rosberg of course does have to pit unless he's going to try really risk it to the end no he's coming in this lap is Rosberg so we're at 53% what's Hamilton at 54% so we're pretty even on tyre wear here Reichen obviously does possibly have quite a little bit of room to push here although we don't have much room with the fuel we still have to recover some of this before the end of the race whereas with Vettel we don't so Rosberg is now in and we're actually pulling away from Hamilton I think he got stuck up he's got a couple of back markers to get past as well so Vettel's pretty much confirmed here and he's setting some he's setting some massive lap times here he's Vettel he's about to go quickest he's about to set a new fastest lap for the race so Vettel does a 120-194. What can Hamilton respond with there? A 120-194 from Vettel. A 120-411. So not too far behind for Hamilton, but we're still quicker than him. What does Raikkonen do? A 120-179. So Raikkonen actually sets the quickest lap there. Although I don't think we've got a lot of room to push with these tyres. Although we could, we couldn't risk it, can't we? We might as well risk it. Although Raikkonen is actually ahead of Rosberg now. I don't know what happened to Rosberg there. We've actually managed to get ahead of him. So maybe we shouldn't waste these tyres. I don't think we're gaining. There's only a couple of laps left. Even at a second of lap we're not going to get it back. So we're going to have to try and conserve these tyres now. We want Raikkonen to stay ahead of Rosberg here. Whereas Vettel... Yeah, we might as well turn these tyres down now so they don't wear out. What's Hamilton's tyres like? Are they around the similar condition? There yeah, they are, so not much to worry about with Vettel. Raikkonen moves down. Verstappen is falling behind here because his tyres are about to go. Is he running in conserve mode? As is Raikkonen. We could possibly run neutral for Raikkonen. Can we catch Verstappen here? So Verstappen is falling off a little bit here, isn't he? Although we do have some fuel to conserve here. We do have a little bit of fuel to conserve with Raikkonen to get him through to the end of the race. So maybe we're not going to be able to hold off Rosberg here. The back marker does a disservice there. Who is that, 13th? That's Palmer in one of the Renaults. So, that is that it? That's Vettel crossing the line there. 15 seconds over Hamilton, so an absolutely dominating race from Vettel. Uh, Raikkonen now is going to finish 6th again, as is per usual for him. Who are lapping here? Going straight, through, <laughs> going straight through the car there. Going straight through the Force India of Hunkenberg. So, Raikkonen comes across the line in 6th. So not a bad finish from Raikkonen. He's more performing to expectations of what we would have expected. But Vettel absolutely having a dominating season here. His sixth win in a row. And that is a race where there was no real strategy mess ups from the Mercedes. Although they could have come in a lap earlier when we did. And stayed a lot closer through the pit stop. They tried to go a lap longer. Whereas we had a fresh tyre in there. We tried to go around. I don't know why they went so slow on that lap. Vettel managed to get a nice big boost off that lap. That one lap that Hamilton didn't come in for. Which sort of turned the tide of the race. And then of course from that Hamilton got held up behind his team at Rosberg. Even though Rosberg was on a quicker tyre. He seemed to be holding up Hamilton quite a bit. It was just this one lap here. Even though he came in for the quicker tyre. He wasn't able to pick it back up. Just that one lap, we managed to make up quite a little bit of difference there. So let's have a quick look at the timings here. So we were actually... Well, we didn't actually set the quickest lap time. Look at that. Nico Rosberg, at one point of the race, did a 1.18. So why can't the Mercedes do that over and over again? 
Although he possibly only did that because he did have he went for a new pair of ultra softs again right at the end, didn't he? So probably going all out on a pair of ultra softs. So that's why he did a 118. Got Hamilton on a pair of super softs, did a 120-145, so not too far away from what we are. So it looks like we're pretty evenly matched at the moment with the Mercedes. So that should put us even further ahead of the Mercedes. Now I can't believe how far ahead we are. What do we pick up 33 points? And obviously it's only 28 for the Mercedes. So another win for Vettel, another first place trophy here. 63 points now ahead is Vettel. And we're now 56 points ahead. 249 to Mercedes, 193. Red Bull holding up in third. Force India ahead of Williams. Toro Rosso, McLaren and Renault Haas and Sauber yet to score points. We're almost at the halfway point of the season and we're a long way ahead. Would need a lot of one twos from Mercedes I think to come back at us from this point on. So everyone happy we've got new driver traits added but that's just the uh, fitness. Uh, Raikkonen has got a dodgy neck at the moment so he's going to be affected a little bit for the next race. So we came first overall, so everything's still doing well. We've got a little bit here. That's because we uh, you know, we finished outside the limit on on qualifying, didn't we, for once. We actually finished outside the limit. So GP2, fair line. So I, think, I wonder if that's one of Manor's first wins of the season here. They haven't been performing too well. Although Fairline and Ocon are now 16 points, so maybe, just maybe... No, jointly no, because NATO in the racing engineering car has got 35. Where's the other racing it? Joshua King. He's 17th with zero points in the other racing engineering team. And Prima doing pretty poorly here. So it's going to be hard. Ah, they're actually top. Because of uh, Machishita and uh, Sorokin. Yeah, so it's going to be hard for Mana. I thought Mana would be. Uh, they have got by, by far and away the better car. And possibly the better drivers as well with the uh, with the Mercedes uh, with the Mercedes kids here, Verline and Ocon. So pretty interesting there. That man that is struggling a little bit. So we just got a few mail here. Mercedes on Verstappen pits Hamilton to pull car condition update race win. Neck issues, dodgy neck, fitness minus ten. Right, so I don't think this is even going to be ready in time for the next Grand Prix, is it? No. So we're just waiting, we're waiting on whether we can get Ross Braun here. So car repair is now complete. There's not much that we're working on, we're just working on all the sort of general little bits that we can. And the offer is accepted from Ross Brown. It's going to cost a hell of a lot of money to do it, but that is one of the things that I wanted to set out to do. Although he didn't want actually, he didn't want a signing on fee or any bonuses, but it's going to cost this four million to get rid of Bonotto. So we do now have Ross Brown with the team. So next, uh, next on the agenda is Mick Schumacher here. His contract's up at the end of the season, so I think hopefully he's possibly going to get released. Hopefully, just have to see what we maybe we'll have to make a move for him before the end of the season. Is he interested in signing for us? Yeah, he is. So maybe we can get him in for Jean Eric Verne before the end of the season and have him do a few practice sessions before the end of the season as well. That would be interesting to see how quick he is. How far behind he is and then that would inform our decision for next season wouldn't it if we can see that he's uh, performing pretty well so other than that there's not much to do here so this is possibly where yeah we'll leave it here and then I'll see my head to the Silverstone Grand Prix and we'll pick up from the next episode from there so thank you everybody again for watching this Ferrari series another win six in a row go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below if you're not already subscribed hit that like button as well Leave a comment. I do try and reply to every comment. The other driver spot is still open. Number two for next season. So if you do have any thoughts, I've got quite a few thoughts. Perez is possibly going to get it if we don't hand it to Schumacher. But leave any comments below if you think we should go for someone different. Although we do need the markability rating to be pretty high. As that is what we're going for. I'm not bothered about sort of like having the best... Uh, I'm not bothered about really like having the best uh, driver. 
at Carlos Sainz is a little bit better than Sergio Perez, but his mic ability is not as good as Sergio Perez, so Perez would get the nod at that point. Although I think Sergio Perez is rated a little bit lower because he's got a dodgy neck as well, just like Raikkonen has, so that's why he's dropped down a little bit. But anyway, that's all for this time. Until next time, I will see you down the road in Silverstone for the British Grand Prix, and goodbye.